Have you ever felt like everyone was against you and that they hated you? What about the time when you feel like, oh, I messed up in this social interaction just because your friend used a harsher tone on you? What about when you fail to get the grade that you want in your favorite subject, and then you start to spiral into self-deprecation? These are examples of internalization. And why do we internalize? Well, this is due to a common enemy, unhealthy attachment. Unhealthy attachment often refers to the maladaptive, excessive emotional bond one has towards a certain aspect, a certain desire, a certain concept, or even a person. When we attach to things, we, our whole entire being, our whole entire thoughts start to revolve around this very one specific thing. Now, this may sound confusing, and I believe some of you may be thinking, Oh no, I don't attach to things. What even is this? Well, it's actually more common than we think of it to be. Let me paint a few examples. You know how like every year, many students prepare for big exams such as the IB, IGCSEs, A-levels, etc. In their mind, students have this idea of a perfect grade, a standard that they want to reach, and if they don't, they're cr they crumble because they're automatically a disappointment to, to their family and they bring dishonor to them. Well, this very stress, this very stress brings anxiety to students. And if students stopped overthinking about what grade they'll get or what results they'll get, they'll find their lives to be much freer and less stressful. Another thing is in social interactions with friendships. With the recent inclusion of online communication and texting, social media, etc., we often find that it's much harder to tell tones on text than in real life for like emotions through online communication. Because of this, people can't help but overthink Oh no, did I say things right? Did I phrase things right? Is this emoji, like the winking face emoji, used in the certain context? Is this used correctly? Well, naturally, people, people worry about other people's emotions because we're humans, we can't help that. However, if people started to detach from this and other people's emotions and realizing, hey, it's all okay, then honestly, people's interactions with others will be much smoother. Attachment in general is more so of internal emotions binding to external factors. And honestly, aspirations are great. Good on you. However, there is a fine line between having aspirations as a form of giving you a life's purpose and giving you a sense of completion and then there's also the other side, which is unhealthy attachment. In order for us to not go this far, we have to practice this thing called detachment. But what even is detachment? No, it is not a debilitating psychological condition. It is not where you go numb. It is not where you stop feeling your own emotions or engage with other people's emotions. It is instead the process of letting go of what no longer serves you in life. Detachment, I find, it is not about you possessing nothing. It is about the nothing possesses you. This mindset in general enables greater self-reflection, the ability to respond rather than to react to life's situations, and the ability to become resilient in the face of whatever the heck life throws at you. So how do we end up forming this mindset? Number one, you have to be in the present moment. One of my favorite quotes from Kung Fu Panda said by Master Ugwe, yesterday was history, tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. As cliche as this quote sounds, it is insightful as to one, as how one should approach life. We can't change the past, nor can we cling on it. What good does that do? We don't know what the future holds. Why bother overthinking about what hasn't even happened? That leaves one last thing for us to do, which is to stay in the present. 
is there something interesting on the bulletin that appeared recently? Go sign up for it. Did your friend leave you on read or delivered for that matter? So be it. We have to be in the present moment so that we don't miss out opportunities and potential areas of growth. Humans have this innate fear of rejection, that we're never good enough, we're never going to meet the standard. And because of this, humans stop trying new things. They stay in the comfort zone, thinking that, oh no, life is going to get much harder from here. Rejection is often redirection. Life has three answers for every situation. Yes, not right now, or there's something better. If we never try, how would we know? If we take a step outside of our comfort zone, we become more resilient, we develop new opportunities, we definitely have more things to talk about in life, which gives us a sense of autonomy. More on the topic of autonomy, another thing about detachment that is crucial is to realize that there are certain things that only we can control. <clears throat> Do you remember playing episode back in the days? Yes, those choose your story Odome games? Exactly. We are in charge of our own lives. This sounds, why am I saying this? Okay, there are certain things that we can control and certain things that are outside of our control. What we can control is how we speak to ourselves, how we set boundaries, how, what we even do with our lives which means that what others do with their lives, how they talk to you, how they speak to you, we can't control a thing. While realizing what we can control and letting go of what we can't, we detach ourselves from, these, from this very idea of expectations. We also gain the autonomy to be more assertive. We gain a sense of independence and realize we're not so much slaves to fate anymore. Yes, life is cruel, but what more so matters is how we respond to it. The last thing I want you guys to consider is the fact that the world doesn't revolve around one person. No, 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 this is not exactly a phrase to humble the egotistic. It's the truth. So you know that time when you accidentally kick a balloon up in the air and fall on your back in your year 11 prom? What about the time when you messed up on your speech? What about the time when you fumbled everything in life? In the end, no one's gonna know what you wear each day, what color you even dye your hair, what piercings you get. There are eight billion people on this planet and Earth, and we are on Earth, which is like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine planets in this Milky Way galaxy. And this galaxy in general is one out of two trillion galaxies in the universe. We are just specks. We are this small. And in reality, our problems aren't as deep as we think they are to be. They're personal but not exactly deep. <clears throat> By realizing that, in general, nobody really cares. It's not to say that you are important, it's just nobody actually cares because life is very busy for everyone. When we realize this, we can take steps to become our authentic selves. We can take steps to making the life that we want to be. Unfortunately for us, unhealthy attachment also is present in relationships. So let me give you an example. You have someone you care about deeply. They may have manifested as a parental figure, one that you didn't exactly experience when growing up. No, I'm not shaming anyone. <clears throat> but maybe so. You may have experienced this form of connection, this form of validation, this form of belonging that you never really got to experience while growing up. And while you, while you have this, you cling on to this warmth that you, got, that you got from like this other person. And because of this, you felt alive. 
because they made you feel alive. You want to maintain this for as long as possible. However, in this, at the same time, it stunts your own self-growth. Instead of true intimacy or true interdependence, you get codependency. It's this vicious cycle of pushing and pulling. Oh my gosh, they're distancing themselves from me. What do I do? It's like the feeling of constantly seeking external validation from this one person. This is an example of anxious attachment. This is where we feel as if one person is responsible for your emotional needs. And this is not cool. Because in reality, you are yourself. They, they don't complete, people don't complete you in your life. They're merely just someone who adds on to it. So I also feel like that unhealthy attachment in general resembles a powerful addiction. As your feelings of attachment towards a certain aspect grow stronger, so do the withdrawal symptoms as well. And honestly, when we fixate on a certain aspect in life, that's usually all we think about. But because of this, this leaves us for other opportunities in life to pass by us. We miss out the beauty in everything. So because we don't want to be pathetic, because we don't want to feel like, we don't want to drive people away due to how little we have from ourselves. How do we not go to this far? Put yourselves first, first and foremost. Like I said, you are in charge of your own lives. Think of yourself highly, not in the way of scarcity, not in a way of ego like egotism. It's more, of this, it's more of the fact where you have so much love and care to give to yourselves that if someone else doesn't give you that, or if an, if an opportunity doesn't serve you anymore, then that's just not meant for you. Know your worth. Put yourself on the pedestal. Like, you know how you put other people on the pedestal? But no, put yourself on there. Put yourself on there. You, you're great in life. As cliche as it sounds, it's true. But because of this, when we realize that opportunities Certain opportunities just aren't meant for us, and we stop, we stop inhibiting the flow of life. We, and we op instead open to things that come our way. Our lives are much happier this way. We should also, in the end, heal, work on being more introspective. Oftentimes, I also find that attachments come from a lack of self-esteem, an insecure self-concept, or maybe this was the norm and model to you. When we instead don't hear our own self-concept, when we have these insecurities and let other people feed on them, we can easily get taken advantage of, and which definitely leads to unhealthy relationships. Instead, we should all work on being the safe place for ourselves, and so that other people, good people, for a matter, can be invited into our lives. Another thing is to not let your emotions control you, yet still have them. Emotions, they come and go in waves, if that's one thing I learned from my counseling sessions. They come and go in waves. They're not meant to last forever. They, no matter how big they are, no matter how mad you get at someone, no matter I don't know if you had that fight with a friend or if you just broke up with your ex. The feeling is going to come and go eventually. What I like to do and how I like to process my emotions, because that's important. So my best friend is the notes app. We all know that. Or just take, get your notes app, get a notebook. The kids, like, the kids nowadays like to say yap. Just get that. Pour your whole life story into this. Trust me, you will get that sense of mental clarity. You get that sense of mental clarity, you'll then realize, whew, I can now move on with life. But also, let other people be who they want to be. Let yourself be who you want to be. That way, in the end, our emotions don't control us or dictate what we do in, in our life. In the end, Detachment 
is about being connected to everything, yet attached to nothing. It's about letting people be who they want to be, letting ourselves be who we want to be, and letting life flow as they are without considering external setbacks. Let things be and let things go. Thank you.